Like most kids, growing up I watched a ton of cartoons, specifically on places like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. Sometime in 5th grade, while watching Toonami at night on Cartoon Network, I caught a glimpse of this little, not too well known anime. You may know it as Naruto. And nothing, I mean nothing, beats the feeling of discovering anime or any kind of new entertainment for the first time. I mean sure, when I was younger I saw stuff like Dragon Ball Z or Sailor Moon, but I didn't really register those as anime in my mind until that moment with Naruto. I was hooked on this thing called anime and watched it and other animes nearly exclusively as my source of TV shows all throughout middle school and some parts of high school. And even to this day, each new TV season, I'm trying to find two to three different anime to watch. And honestly, while the number of series I keep track of each season has slowly been declining as I get older, I still try to watch something new each season. So when Crunchyroll, a streaming service for anime, is advertised on YouTube, I got super curious. Like, real curious. Maybe too curious. Is this premium service any good? For the casual anime watcher, is it worth paying for? Should you start using it? I've seen Crunchyroll around for a long time, but is it worth spending your money on? Let's find out with a little review. First, we have to start off with describing what Crunchyroll is. Let's start with a little history lesson. We have to go way back to 2006. Crunchyroll made its debut as a place for anime fans to congregate and discuss anime on a forum and, well, upload anime, music videos, anime music videos, gaming videos, really anything. That sounds really, really familiar, right? Almost like a different site that was growing around that time. Hmm, wait, what am I doing all this for? That site probably never panned out. It was a very popular place to watch anime subtitled by fan translation teams for free, because back in the old days, most English subbed anime were done by fans. Wow, I, I really feel old saying that. And of course, there's a huge problem with that, like potentially large money related problems with that. We're talking copyright and getting sued. Not fun. Over time, as their user base grew, they slowly transitioned from being a place filled with copyrighted material uploaded by its user base to a site that discarded that image altogether and started to develop itself as a place that obtained rights to stream officially licensed anime series literally hours after the Japanese release. Initially, they had very few series, but their library has grown a lot since. But of course, over time, some series do end up getting removed as well. And now they even have their own Crunchyroll original animes that are only on Crunchyroll. They really changed their image over the years, and they did it really quickly too. It took them within three years of hosting user uploaded content to disallowing the copyrighted materials from being on the site at all. This is all because during that three year span, they managed to secure money from a venture firm and secured rights to simulcast a show that was super popular at the time. Naruto Shippuden. That's right, the sequel show to the show that got me into anime in the first place. You can see why they would be willing to discard their old image there. Naruto is a huge franchise that has a ton of fans. This was their big break to shed their old image and start trying to develop themselves as a legitimate source for anime. Now, I'm not saying it's good that Crunchyroll was originally a place filled with copyrighted content, but being an anime fan during that era, it was hard finding legitimate sources. Crunchyroll and many others were providing a free service for a market that existed, but there was no good paid service for at that time. So think of it from their shoes. Would you rather be a platform that allows illegal uploads of anime with the potential of getting sued out of your mind? I mean, YouTube still has problems with people uploading copyrighted content on its platform every single day, and really, it's hard to get rid of all that. Or would you rather start from square one again, with some corporate backing, have one of the most popular shows headlined on your website, and, oh, you know, here's the big one, you won't get sued. So that's Crunchyroll's past. They created legitimacy through building a user base that thrived on illegitimacy, then pivoted how they do things to become legitimate. But what is Crunchyroll now? In late 2020, Crunchyroll is primarily an anime streaming service that provides access to a library of anime that ranges from some older stuff like Cardcaptor Sakura, the original Naruto series, and Cowboy Bebop, to anime that is being released right now in 2020, like ReZero, Haikyuu, and Jujutsu Kaisen. Their library is massive with a very small amount of drama series mixed in as well. So if you wanna know if a specific show is on there, I really suggest looking at their website because it can really depend on where you live. They also have a small selection of manga for their premium members and a store you can purchase anime related merchandise from. They also have an app for a ton of different devices such as iOS, Android, PlayStation, Xbox, 
the website on your computer, and even some smart TVs. But at the timing of this video, there are also some platforms that I think they're missing on, like the Nintendo Switch, Samsung TVs, and Samsung Smart Fridge. We definitely need that one. All right, now let's talk about the service itself. Overall, the app and website work as it's intended. If you're a free user, you can watch any of the available shows, but for new shows, you'll have to wait a week after release to watch those. Free users also have to deal with ads, and sometimes the same ads would appear multiple times. That means two to three times throughout a single episode. Also, if you're watching a show, it's possible to get a Crunchyroll ad for the exact same show that you're currently watching. I don't really think that's a good use of ad space, and those things would probably annoy any other user too, unless, you know, Crunchyroll thought this was a good idea and was completely intentional to get people to upgrade to premium because it would just drive people insane. Then, well, that's just smart. Crunchyroll does have originals like Netflix or Disney Plus, but for their originals, you can watch them without paying for a premium subscription. You'll just get ads and you'll have to watch the latest episode a week after it's released. I think that's one of the unique things about Crunchyroll. Unlike the other services, it's basically free to use, but with the few cons we mentioned above. I've also spent some time the last few months as a premium member to really feel the differences. For the most part, I've been a free user of their site for nearly a decade, and here's what's felt different between being a free user and a premium user. I felt that as a premium member, you enjoyed an episode of each show more. Ads can really take you out of the experience, especially when you're watching a really touching, emotional part during Your Lie in April. And then Crunchyroll, it just slaps you with an ad for the all new Chalupa Cravings box with Mountain Dew Baja Blast, only at Taco Bell, Live Moss. Yeah. No thanks, I'm not feeling a date with a toilet today. Basically, your watching experience is enhanced without those ads. Imagine if you got an ad at the movie theater in the middle of the film. It would ruin your immersion, right? How much of that matters depends on person to person though. I mean, for me, I think it's a big deal, but if that's not a big deal to you, just watch the stuff with ads. One strange thing I noticed on their site is that if you're on the manga of a particular series, like in this instance, Attack on Titan, you can switch over to the anime episodes with the click of a button. And the tabs are gone. You can't go back to the manga and using the exact same method. Of course, you can always press back on your internet browser, but I thought it was interesting enough to point out that this is kind of annoying. It's just not consistent. All right, to be 100% fair with Crunchyroll, my overall experience with its premium membership was a positive experience with the anime feeling much more overall immersive. All right, now let's move on to their premium plan pricing. They currently have three plans that are anywhere from $8, $10, or $14.99. To be 100% honest with you, when comparing these plans, I really think the $9.99 plan is the best value. I think its pricing is really fair. If you compare that plan to similar plans by Netflix and Hulu, you're getting similar features, but for less money as well as being able to watch more simultaneous streams. Of course, Crunchyroll does serve specialty content, but what I mean by this is that the user base and variety of content on a Netflix or Hulu are both vastly larger than on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is just anime, manga, and a very small list of drama series. Netflix and Hulu, they both have so much more. So that's why I think Crunchyroll selling for less than Netflix and Hulu while providing more niche content makes complete sense. The extra benefits from the ultimate fan subscription is real minuscule to me. I don't think many people have entire families that are into watching anime and all at the same time separately on six different devices. And honestly, even if you share this account between friends, between six friends, how often would you all be watching at once? I just think this particular plan is very niche and not ideal for the majority of their base. And plus, if you don't care for this particular Nindroid figure, why would this even matter? <laughs> it would just go straight in the trash. I feel this video has been long. I feel like it's the Skillshare video all over again. Is this gonna hit 20 minutes? I hope not. I don't really like making videos that long. <sighs> okay, before we get to the conclusion, Let's talk about some of Crunchyroll's competitors for a quick second. This is mainly Funimation and partially Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime Video. Funimation offers a very similar service to Crunchyroll, but there are a few key differences. 
Funimation's lineup and catalog of anime have a large overlap, but there are some anime that both platforms have that are unique and the other one doesn't have. Funimation also has the same rule about waiting a week to see the latest episode if you're a free user, but there's also some titles that require you to have a premium subscription to view at all. The free to watch model is similar to Crunchyroll in that you'll watch ads before, during, and after episodes. And sadly, what's also similar with Crunchyroll is that you can get the same ads over and over again in the exact same episode. As for Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime Video, well, like mentioned earlier, these services are more like variety services that offer more than just anime. They have so much more content, it's not even comparable. But if we're just looking at anime alone, then of course Crunchyroll just wipes the floor against these other options. But do keep in mind, these services are building their own catalog of exclusive anime you can't find anywhere else except on their platforms as well. Like Violet Evergarden on Netflix and Made in Abyss on Amazon. Also know that just like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix, Crunchyroll can lose the streaming rights to shows on their platform and stop showing them all together. But sadly, that's just the state of the world and how streaming services work. All right, now it's conclusion time. Should you subscribe to Crunchyroll? Well, it really depends, right? The real benefit of Crunchyroll Premium over not having it is you get an ad-free experience and access to anime as soon as it airs. But... If you're a casual user, you probably wouldn't care and can just watch a week later. And each season as new anime comes out, you might not enjoy the anime lineup for that season, so that subscription might not be used as much. But if you're the type of person who binges anime constantly and watches six to seven se <laughs> Wow, that was awful. If you're the type of person that binges six to seven series a season, then this might suit you for a better overall immersive experience. So this is just my opinion, but I think it would kind of go like this. If you're super frugal, like you have no money in your pocket, nothing to spare, just watch it with ads on Crunchyroll and Funimation. Then if you have some money to spare, I'd argue you're better off with a Netflix subscription for more varied content and still have access to Crunchyroll with ads. Then if you have more money to spare, subscribe to Crunchyroll or Funimation Premium for an ad-free experience. One of the good benefits of their subscription model is that if you're not enjoying a particular season of anime, you can easily just cancel your subscription for two to three months and join again, just to save yourself some cash during that time period. So. Should you personally subscribe to Crunchyroll? And is it worth your money? Like all answers, it depends. Is anime your primary source of video entertainment? Do you watch enough new and old anime a month to justify the price? Does Crunchyroll consistently have the anime series you care enough to spend money to watch? Do you like Crunchyroll's offerings over Funimations? If you answered yes to all these questions, then I'd say yes, go for it. It's your money, you do you. If you answered no to any of these, then maybe not. For me personally, as a casual watcher of anime, I occasionally have seasons where I find myself watching a ton of anime. Like this upcoming season looks absolutely fantastic. Attack on Titan series finale, Promised Neverland, season two, ReZero, Dr. Stone, and Slime Anime. It's, it's a great lineup and I may just subscribe during the winter season and then cancel it. It just all depends on what's being offered at the time. Anyway guys, what do you think? Is Crunchyroll worth it in your own eyes? What's your favorite anime series? Maybe I'll check some of them out. Which YouTube sponsors should I check out next? Leave all that in the comment section below. If you want to see what series I enjoyed over the last few years, I'll leave it on a pinned comment below or something. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.